Enemy missed it. Enemy hunter. Enemy crawler. I'm gonna sit on C. Bullseye. How we doing today folks, my name is Raven, and welcome to the Complete Robin Guide. In this video, I'll be discussing and showing you all the knowledge I've gained playing Robin over the past 400 hours that I have logged into the game. I will be covering Robin's role on the team, tactical and situational awareness, positioning and pinging, the different types of arrows, perks in general as well as perk builds, and I'll finish off with some general tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. I will mark chapters in the description that will allow you to choose the exact parts of the guide you would like to jump to. Now let's begin. Nice. Robin is the sniper. There are a few different playstyles you can take on, but at his core, he works best at a distance. Robin can kill enemy outlaws at any distance, for the most part, as well as providing the team with valuable Overwatch information. What I mean by for the most part is that if a John is using the stable tank perk, or Marianne is using the survivalist perk, they can live through a fully charged arrow to the head, which can be a slight annoyance. More on that later. Also, your arrows will tend to magnetize toward a player or state guard's head the farther you are away. I say this because it becomes very prevalent when you don't play on your home server. So me being east coast, even just playing on west coast servers, I hit headshots that I should never even count. And in order to play on a different server, you need to have a player from that server invite you to their hideout or use a VPN. I typically always play on East Coast, but I have played West Coast and EU before. The differences are incredible. I'll say quickly that the information end of things might be hard to convey when you solo queue, but is extremely valuable if your randoms are on comms or you are in a force stack. You essentially take on the role of an in-game leader. Your melee characters and even Mary Ann's will be running straight into combat, giving you the opportunity to survey the map, see where Sheriff is, or heading, watch for flanking enemy outlaws, engage where the best extraction zone for the chest to be taken to. Additionally, it's wise to keep tabs on the spawn points because you'll probably be the first one to get assassinated. Having the knowledge of what outlaws are on the other team is important when deciding who can reach your team from what distance and understanding which extraction zone will be the most ideal for nice, your nice, team nice, composition. Nice. There are opportunities for both, but they do go hand in hand. Nice. We'll touch on this topic briefly. Being tactical means guiding your team to the right places, having the knowledge of map layout to know what is the quickest way to your desired extraction or the stealthiest way. It also means understanding what perks you're bringing into a match. As of right now, you cannot change your perks once you load into a map. Therefore, you must live with the decisions you make in the hideout for perks. I wish you could change perks once you know what map you're on, but we can't do that at the moment. There is a lot to situational awareness, but we can cover more in tips and tricks. For now, what you could take from this is that it's important to know where you are comfortable playing. Unfortunately, not every map allows you to sit back really far and support your team. You will have to get into close range combat. This means learning how to fight in those scenarios, shooting, dodging, punching, and ulting. Situational awareness also includes making in the heat of the moment decisions like prioritizing taking spawn points over team fighting, or pushing the chest to the extraction you want before recovering stolen spawn points. I'll add briefly here that you should avoid alerting the state at all costs. The worst thing for you as a Robin is being the last person on your team to stop the enemy from winching, but you're glowing red and can be easily dealt with. Positioning and pinging are pretty self-explanatory, but we'll get into the reasons why they are both important. Melee attacks are unreliable in close quarters combat, unless you use the perk Razor Gauntlets. More on that later. But without it, your attacks will do minimal damage. I only suggest punching them if they have a sliver of health or you want to set them up for a headshot. Beyond that, your arrows will still be your main source of damage. If you do find yourself up close, then try to have your melee characters frontline for you like an ADC in a MOBA. 
Holding your shots for when the enemy gets stunned by a Marianne Bolt, John Attack, Duke Attack, or even Ada Attack is perfect for you to hit them in the head. If you're using Mercurial Arrow, you will be even more effective up close, especially when the enemy groups up. As mentioned before, from a distance you have vision and knowledge to provide your team. Also being able to pick off targets before they get within striking distance is a huge advantage as well. Most of the maps in the game currently, after you have control of the three neutral spawns, force the enemy team to run a great distance in order to get to a winch location if you took it to your home spawn side. That gives you free reign to fire arrows at those targets. Pinging. As Robin, you should always be pinging enemy players, sheriff, guards, or objectives. He has a passive which makes it so those pings last longer than when any of the other outlaws ping something. Once you ping an enemy player, they will have a glowing red outline. This is the same thing that happens to you when you alert the state. However, when you get pinged by an enemy player, there is no way of knowing that. You could be sitting in a bush or hiding behind a wall thinking that you're hidden, but the enemy robin is just waiting for you to peek to blast your head off. This is why it's so important to ping. But be careful and don't go too crazy trying to ping everything because you can only ping one thing at a time. As soon as you ping a new target, the old ping will go away. I suggest rebinding your key, if you're on PC, to one you can hit while holding an arrow charged and aiming. As Robin, you will eventually have access to three different types of arrows, and with most perks, you will have a maximum of seven arrows to use. I say eventually because they are technically perks which you unlock over time as you level up the character. In order, you will have access to standard arrows, bodkin arrows, and broadheads. On screen now, you will be seeing comparisons between the three different types. Also, the damage numbers might be slightly skewed because the test dummies in the hideout have more health than the characters you play as. As long as you are not using the perk Bodkin Point or Broadheads, you will be using standard arrows. Standard arrows fly at a moderate speed and begin to drop off and dive down after a certain point. They are what Robin uses by default when you first start to play as him. Fairly easy to get used to, but they do require you to lead your target quite a bit if they are running perpendicular to you and the really far shots, you will have to aim higher than what you think you will need. Also, I couldn't tell you the percentage exactly, and this game doesn't like to give you specific numbers on anything. You'll see a theme with that, but you can recover these arrows from the environment about like 70% of the time. Botkin point are arrows that fly further and faster than standard ones. Their drop off point is farther out, and they will reach their target quicker, giving you less time to compensate for distance or lethality. However, they will always break on impact, so you won't be able to recover your shots if you are close to where they landed. These arrows also allow you to be an annoying presence to the enemy team from almost any location. Broadheads are arrows that begin to drop off much faster than standard ones, but they do travel at the same speed. They deal significantly less damage if you just tap fire them without charging. A fully charged broadhead will in fact kill a John using Stable Tank or a Marianne using Survivalist. This also means it will take less fully charged shots to kill an enemy if you don't aim for the head. You will also have to compensate for range and leading a target significantly more than standard arrows, so good luck. These arrows can be recovered. My personal choice of arrows is Bodkin Point. I prefer my shots to get to my target quicker. And as long as you are accurate, you don't need the extra damage from broadheads. You will have to deal with the stable tanks and survivalists, which is an unfortunate negative to the perk, but you also experience the same thing with standard arrows. The arrows breaking doesn't really bother me too much since I'm always trying to hang around an arrow box. They work for me because I like to sit back and support my team from afar. The faster a target is killed, the longer your team has to winch or move the chest. My suggestion to new players, or anyone trying to get better at Robin, would be to try all three, then pick one type you like and stick with it. Even me, who has countless hours on Robin, gets thrown off if I try to switch arrows. Just means I need to spend more time adjusting than killing. And because we can't change our perks in the lobby waiting for the game to start, it's best to just stick with one type. Every outlaw has the ability to equip three perks at a time, one in each slot, but the amount of perks to select from varies per outlaw. Robin has access to three perks in slot one. Reticent Recon grants you more XP for killing anyone carrying the chest. You will also capture spawn points and climb ropes and ladders about twice as fast. But when using your stamina to winch the chest, it will winch slower than normal. 
Volatile Gourd grants Robin one extra flashbang, and your flashbangs have increased effects. The blind will last much longer than on a standard flashbang. Also, the affected area is about one unit bigger than normal. His flashbangs will instantly drain all the stamina away from the target, but with Volatile Gourd, it will take longer before their stamina starts regening. Focus Flight is the last option. This makes it so any long shot kills you get will charge your alt meter faster. Essentially, the farther a target is away from you when you kill them, the greater amount of ult charge you will get. This is typically about where a guard starts to render in, but closer shots happen to count as well. Players will always be rendered in, but the farther the distance, the more they teleport around and it's harder to land a shot. This means you could almost have a fully charged ult again right after you ult, then follow up with a kill with a normal arrow. For perk slot 2, there are 5 perks to choose from. Scavenger actually grants you maximum arrows when performing an assassination on guards or players. This is a weird perk because most of the time I'm buying arrow box for replenishment, whether I'm far away or up close. So I look at this as the weakest perk in the category. Botkin Point, which we already talked about. Razor Gauntlets allows Robin to do about 2.5 times as much damage with melee attacks regardless of how many arrows you have. The perk clearly states that you deal damage based on how many arrows you have, but this is incorrect. You actually do the same damage whether you have 7 or 1, but your damage will be reduced back to normal if you actually have 0. Also you lose one arrow every time you land a melee attack or it gets blocked. Tactical Quiver which increases your maximum arrow capacity to 10 and your arrows will break on impact. Finally Broadheads which we already talked about. For perk slot 3, there are 3 perks to choose from. Forceful Fighter, which makes your melee attacks stagger any character they hit, and they require less stamina to throw. However, your maximum arrow capacity will be reduced by two arrows. Elemental Arrow, which causes your ultimate to explode much quicker. Nice. And lastly, Mercurial Arrow, which makes your ultimate arrow explode on impact, but it has a severe drop in cast range. I'll be comparing the different types of ultimates on screen. Understand that Robin's ultimate arrow will stick to anything players, walls, the sheriff, except when you're using Mercurial Arrow. There are essentially three different types of builds for Robin. We start with the ultimate meme and rage inducing combo of the console robin <laughs> volatile true, gourd like razor gauntlets and mercurial arrow you combo every close range engagement by flash banging a player then sprint attacking them which will deplete two-thirds of their health then follow up with either another punch to kill them or shoot them with an arrow you can kill them before their screen returns to normal it's literally uncounterable other than the robin failing to correctly throw the flashbang Mercurial Arrow is there if you want to flashbang someone, then fire your ultimate at them to add the ultimate insult to injury. Or you just use it to instantly kill anyone that approaches you. The second build is what I use constantly, which is Focus Flight, Botkin Point, and Elemental Arrow. Focus Flight is the most valuable in the first slot, in my opinion. You can have up to 10 ults in one match as long as you kill targets from a distance consistently. And on most maps, you can get your ultimate right away because the guards spawn far enough. Botkin Point is what I live and die by. I'll reiterate by saying I enjoy having my arrows hit their target in a quicker, more accurate fashion. That helps you and your team. You certainly can swap out this perk for something else if you wish. Elemental Arrow is my last choice. Having your ultimate explode faster is valuable. You have the option of using it safely in close range combat, as well as the reliability of being able to still use it from afar. It also gives the enemy players less time to react to being stuck by it, or realizing it's at their feet. That was beautiful. The third build is Reticent Recon, Tactical Quiver, and Forceful Fighter. Reticent Recon because this is a mobile build allowing you to defend yourself against melees and Marianne's when back capping spawn points. Your job is then to bug the shit out of the other team by keeping all the spawns under your control. Tactical Quiver to give you 10 arrows then Forceful Fighter to reduce your arrows to 8, so you'll have one more arrow than normal while being able to stagger every character with your melee attacks. Unfortunately, you'll have the longer time until explosion with your ultimate arrow, which I really hate to have. 
Finally, I'll end the guide with some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. It takes Robin 1.17 seconds to fully charge an arrow. This is actually one frame sooner than when the side indicators start to glow gold, indicating a full charge. With much practice, you will get a feel for this time and when you can release your shot as soon as you hit max charge. Some people have even pointed out that it looks like I'm not charging my arrows all the way when I kill someone at full health. It has become habit through muscle memory or sound cues or whatever it is that I can release an arrow as soon as it hits full charge. Most of the time I don't even see the glowing gold indicators for myself. Activating your ultimate, then just tap firing the arrow will make it travel shorter and with an arc. If you hold down a normal arrow until full charge, then activate your ult, that arrow will become the ultimate arrow and you can fire it immediately for maximum distance. If you aim straight up into the air as far as you can go, then tap fire, it will travel exactly 30 units in front of you. You can throw your flashbang and dodge at the same time. Robin has a two melee attack chain, first punch, then kick. The kick will stagger your enemy, and if you are quick and accurate, you can hit them with a headshot while they are staggering. The kick also deals more damage than the punch. If you ever alert the state, make sure you kill the guards chasing you. You don't want to be an enemy Robin that's constantly highlighted red for the other team. With the release of Season 1 and Ada, they changed the way dodging works. As of posting this video, if you dodge then flick either your joystick or mouse around fast enough, you will do a 180 degree turn and be able to assassinate someone right away. Once you get good at it, you can do it right after someone throws a light attack even, making melee outlaws a joke to fight. I also suggest dodging into attacks in order to create distance and make your opponent recenter themselves. If you simply dodge away, they can follow up with easy attacks. I tend to wait and let the person attacking me initiate because as long as you manage your stamina, you should always be able to dodge. Speaking of stamina management, you recover stamina faster if you are crouched. Obviously if you run out of stamina, you can't do anything. But as soon as it starts regening, crouch. This is why I always crouch after dodging attacks or even shooting an arrow. If you're uncomfortable trying to stick a player with your ultimate arrow, then use elemental arrow in perk slot 3 and shoot it at the ground in front of where a player is running. I tend to shoot my ultimates at the ground anyway because it just makes sense. You can recover friendly arrows and bolts as well as enemy arrows and bolts that get shot at you. This means you can set yourself up in a perfect spot and once you run out of arrows, just have your Marianne shoot a bunch at an object near you and you'll pick up 7 arrows that you can use as long as she shoots that many. You can dodge immediately after firing an arrow. This comes in handy when dodging a melee attack or dueling another Robin at a distance. When you shoot an arrow, it gets sent out from the right side of your body. What this means is that you want to peek around the right side of an object as much as you can. If you try to peek around the left side of an object, you are at an instant disadvantage to your opponent. Allow me to walk you through a scenario of what that looks like. So here, I'm helping my teammate take out this tube. We now, now I'm going to push the objective to capture the point. I notice there's a Robin here who just spawned. So, we're going to take a couple shots at him. Now is where I realize I am at the left side disadvantage. As you can see, he, again, you know, can shoot from the right side of his body. So he has, he could see me first, essentially before I can see him. So I try to give a little shot at him, but realize that, oh, it's not gonna work because he has the advantage. So instead I tried to dodge to get him to miss a shot. Didn't work, I got hit anyway. So now I'm like, 
oh no, I'm going to die. So instead of trying to peek him again while he still has advantage here and has the arrow charge advantage because he's already charging one up, I decided to retreat. Now that forces him to push the objective because he wants to you know, thirst me or get a kill. So we reposition. I know he's already aimed in here. He's already charged a little bit, but now I'm just getting confident. So I do the dodge, make him miss. Ready my arrow. He goes for a quick shot, misses, and I finish him off. You could say miss. I don't know. You saw the arrow floating him in the air. Man, this game's crazy. Weird shit has happened, but we'll just say he missed. Now, let me also walk you through what my friends have called the Raven shot. So this actually isn't a recording. This is just a clip from one of my streams, but nonetheless, we can use this. So here I'm dodging left and right, voting Tuke's attacks, trying to dodge into him. But now I'm dodging away because if I dodge into him here, I'm going to actually be closer to him. And I know that that's the last attack in his chain, so he's going to have a slower recovery time. So I back up, save my stamina for that last one for when he throws the heavy attack. Now I try to pull out a flashbang. I get the bug where you go to throw a flashbang or a grenade. It doesn't throw it. So try it again. This time I flash him. I notice there's a John coming to run up on me. So I ready my bow. Try to get the shot off here. Miss, but I end up dodging the attack anyway. So now I'm in a very awkward 2v1 scenario against two melees. So now I again ready my shot for John. Now the trick with this, this is a perfect frame. But the trick with this is that you charge it, you hold your arrow, and right as they attack, you shoot. You're going to hit them in the head. As long as you can aim appropriately, sometimes they're going to be like crouching all over the place or moving around really fast. But as soon as they go to attack, if you can line your bow up, the reticle isn't going to be like exactly on their head because, again, of how the arrows shoot and how weird it is. But as long as you're near the head area, you should hit them. So now you could see the gold edges of the charge there or indicating I have a fully charged shot and he's not using stable tank so get the shot off get the kill follow up with the dodge because in case you know you get hit it might happen I've been hit before while shooting that so it happens but now we're gonna set up again now for the toque I crouch to regen stamina reposition so the two can hit me and ready my bow again I'm charging again now I'm fully charged He's blocking. I'm waiting for him to make the move. That makes it easier for me because all I can do is sit here and hold my arrow until I either get another person to come running up on me or he attacks me because if I just shoot him right now while he's guarding, it's a waste of a shot, waste of an arrow, and a wasted use of my stamina. So we're going to wait. We're going to wait. Be patient. As soon as he goes to the attack, hit the headshot. Seems simple, but I will say that this is a strategy I implemented when I first started playing the game. And because I didn't want to use Razor Gauntlets, I realized that I need to be effective in close range elsewhere. So instead, I learned how to do this. And that's just kind of what I've been known for. And that will do it for the full Robin Guide. If you made it this far, then I really appreciate you watching and hope you learned a thing or two. If you enjoyed this, then don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Remember to follow my Twitter, join my Discord, and check out my Patreon if you want to monetarily support me. Links to all those are in the description below. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later!